everybody, and welcome to HCAM Sports Talk Live. I'm your host, Tom Nappy. And on today's show, we're going to take a look back at all of the fall highlights from the Hopkinton Hillers season. This fall, we had field hockey action, boys and girls soccer, and also some cross country. So without further ado, let's take a look back at the highlights from this past fall season. And then Bob and Mike will join me and we'll make our week 11 NFL picks. You are tuned in to HCAM Sports Talk Live. Here's a look back at a great Hillers fall season. This weekend, there were six games at the Hopkinton High School turf fields. The action kicked off on a beautiful, sunny, yet windy Saturday afternoon at 9 a.m. with JV Girls Field Hockey. It was a well-played game by both teams. Medway won the JV battle 3 to nothing. Olivia Webb going to take it for the Mustangs. Into the box, kicked away. Still a big threat here out in front of the net. And that is going to be a score. The varsity field hockey game followed and Alyssa Souza netted the first goal of the game with 10-15 left in the first quarter. Sarah Doyle, pass it back over to Liz Kane. Sharma, backhander, deflected away by a defender. Sends it out, looking for a shot here, and it, the attempt to kick it away is not going to be successful, as getting in there for the score is Alyssa Souza. Sarah Doyle added another goal for the Hillers in the second quarter. Sharma will send it over. There's a shot, and that is in. Sarah Doyle with the score. Hiller's Varsity took the game over Medway 2-1. Hiller's Girls Varsity Soccer took on Medway in the third game of the day at the turf fields. Good goaltending by Kristen McCluskey and strong defense by both teams would keep the game scoreless and it ended in a 0-0 tie. Hiller's JV Girls Soccer and Medway played a very good game. It was a scoreless game until the second half. Medway netted a goal in the third quarter, and the Hillers had a goal of their own in the fourth quarter. The game ended in a 1-1 tie. step from Pro oh the jerk. look at that nice shot beautiful well plays. nice goal from brian goo on sunday october 11th hiller's jv boys varsity soccer took on medway at the turf fields the jv boys started off the sunday action in the second quarter brian goo netted a goal for the hillers with 15 41 left in the half to make it a 2-0 Hillers lead, and that's how the game would stay as Hopkinton takes the 2-0 win. Hillers Varsity and Medway was the final game at the turf fields this weekend, and it was an action-packed contest which featured three goals from each team. Nice take into the far right corner. Schnur, 2.20, tied up at two. It was a great opening weekend of Hopkinton Hillers sports at the turf fields. Next weekend, the Hillers take on Holliston. In week two of Hillers sports in Hopkinton, the action got started on Saturday, October 17th with cross country. Boys cross country improved to 2 and 0 with a 22 to 33 win over Holliston while the girls fell to Holliston in a close race 32 to 23. In boys JV soccer, Holliston took the 3 to 1 win in a good well fought out game. 
Nate Lee Thomas scored the lone Hiller's goal. There's not a single Hopkinton player on yep. the line. Nicely taken, well struck from Thomas. Yep. So we're tied up at one. In boys varsity soccer, Holliston and Hopkinton ended in a one-to-one -one tie. Both teams scored in the last 10 minutes of the game. Owen Schnur had the Hillers goal on a very nice free kick. They're using the, Schnur's gonna take a shot. Nice shot, nice what a goal. 40 yards out. Wow. Upper corner. He curled it the inside of his right foot. On Sunday, Hiller's JV girls soccer got the action started off against Holliston. Hopkinton took a very well fought out game, two to one. Emily Hayward and Lily Terigny both had goals in the Hiller's win. Puts it upfield along the sideline, it goes. Nice touch. Here comes Sawyer. Sawyer airs it out, out in front of the net. And it is put in by the Hillers, Emily Hayward on the goal. It's 1-0 Hopkinton. Fantastic play there. Stop, turns, straight. Keep those on the ground and nice job there. There goes Terigny out in front. There's Champlin. It over to Terigny. Opportunity here. There's a shot and a goal. Lily Terigny makes it a two to nothing game. The Hopkinton Hillers in the varsity matchup had a great defensive battle with Holliston. Holliston would come away with the one to nothing win. Hillers varsity field hockey. Battled hard, but fell in a good battle against Holliston by a final score of 3-1. Hiller's JV field hockey closed out the weekend action. Holliston took the win in a close game 2-1. It was another exciting weekend of Hiller's sports, and next weekend, cross country, girls and boys soccer will take on Norton. Hopkinton Hillers Boys Varsity Soccer kicked off the Hillers Weekend Action versus Norton in week three of the season on Saturday afternoon. Yasotora Ito netted a goal with 15.50 left in the first quarter to even the game at one apiece. Spoon Smith, the kick in to Andrew Gunn who lays a nice cross there for Ito. Take the left footed nice shot, shot and that's a goal. Beautiful cross by Andrew Gon to Tora Ito. That's his first goal of the season. It's coming off a foot injury. That's junior Tori Ito, uh, his first goal of the season. And that ties the game up at one. Hiller is trailing two to one in the second quarter until Owen Schnur Nets another game tying goal off his shoulder with 1430 left. Let's see that. Andrew Gon's gonna take this one. He chips it across to Schnoor off, off his, his shoulder, shoulder and into the it's, goal. No, nope, they're calling a handball. There's no way they're oh, calling nope, a handball. Nope. No, it can't be. Then in the third quarter, with 705 on a free kick, Owen Schnur does it again. Oh, nice Schnur shot from Schnur. 7.05. Blistering drive. Goalie didn't have much of a chance there. That would be all the Hillers need. Hopkinton takes the win over Norton 3 to 2. The Hillers currently have one win, three ties, and two losses on the season. The JV Boys game followed up with their battle versus Norton. Jack Ionelli netted a goal with 13.22 left to make it a 3 to nothing Hiller's lead. That goal. And there's Akin. Nice 
move there. Huck in. There's Ianelli. There's a nice shot, shot and it's in. Nice strike. Jack Ianelli with the third goal of the afternoon for the Hillers. It's a 3 0 lead with 13 22 left in the third. Leonard Onkin followed up with two more Hillers goals. In the third quarter, as Hopkinton took care of business against Norton, the Hillers took down the Lancers six to nothing. Here you go. Hawkin approaching. Pass the goalkeeper wide open net with ease for nothing. Some forward opportunity here. There's a Another shot. One. Oh, Leonard Onkin. On Sunday, the Hillers girls took the field. First game of the day was girls JV versus Norton. Ariana Schaefer netted a goal for the Hillers with 2 minutes 30 seconds left in the first quarter. Taking it up the far side, sends it forward towards Schaefer. Schaefer looking for a shot, the goalkeeper way out, and it is in! A 1-0 lead for the Hillers, Ariana Schaefer with the goal. Kate Finnegan added on with two minutes left in the second quarter. The play as it rolls over to the near side, handled by Frazier. She rips it out in front, and the shot is diverted, still in the box. And there's a shot and a goal! Kate Finnegan rips it in to make it a 2 to nothing game. The Hillers took the win 2 to nothing. In the varsity game, the girls celebrated the six seniors on their roster before taking on Norton. Let's take a look at the ceremony. make out what he's saying. He, he knows how to project the voice, that's for sure. It was a good defensive battle, but Lexi Trendle and Brooke Doherty set up Joanna DuPont in the fourth quarter. Right up there. Here comes McCullis. Sends it up towards Trendle. There's a boot into the box, and that is going to be a goal! Joanna DuPont got there before Hebert could, 
And it's 1-0 Hillers. The goal put the Hillers in the win column as they took down Norton 1-0 to wrap up a weekend of winning for Hillers boys and girls soccer. This past Monday, Hopkinton JV Girls Soccer kicked off a doubleheader of games versus Ashland. It was a scoreless game all the way until two minutes left in the third quarter, where Ashland scored to make it one to nothing. By Graziano. For Ashland is Friedman. Into the box. Sent back to the goaltender, and no, it's going to end up being a goal. Shortly after the Hillers responded, Nina Brooks evened up the game. That was a pretty good boot there by Van Buren. On the side, here comes Cincinnati sending it down, looking for Hayward. Aired out, out in front, and that is in! What a beauty of a goal! Nina Brooks off the pass from Cincinnati makes it one to one. Hopkinton and Ashland JV ended in a one to one draw. In the varsity game, Ashland scored a nice goal with 11 minutes left in the second quarter to make it one to nothing. Matty English on the free kick. Here's it out. That's a goal. Oh, that's in. What a beauty by Maddie English to make it a 1-0 Ashland lead. Great goal. Well struck. Shortly after, Ava Perlov set up Joanna DuPont for a goal. Deal. Deal. And here comes Perlov. Takes a shot and just with that's the head it. it's put in. Great. Great shot from DuPont. Then a few minutes later, the Hillers added yet another. Gabriella Siri set up Lexi Trendle to make it 2-1. to one. Gabriella Siri. This is a perfect time for a shot. Siri. Oh, great play. And that Excellent. is in. So Siri put it towards yep. the net, yep. and then it looks like it went off of Trendle. Yep, it was. Two to one in the third quarter, and Gabriella Siri finds Joanna DuPont on a beauty of a free kick. She might go all the way to the net with this, you never know. Nice one out in front. Nice DuPont shot with DuPont. a goal! Well taken. That's the second goal of the day for DuPont. The Hillers would win by that 3-1 to one score and improve to four wins, one loss, and two ties on the season. On Tuesday, November 3rd, Hillers JV Field Hockey kicked off a triple header of Hillers games Ashland would score the lone goal in the second quarter. And some nice defense today. Here comes Ashland. Good stop there. Into the box, looking for a shot, and there's a goal. Wow. That was a nice pass right in front for Sophie Porter to lace it in. And that's how the score would stand. Ashland wins a good defensive battle, one to nothing. In game two of the triple header, Hiller's varsity field hockey celebrated senior night before they took on Ashland. Here's a look.
again, number one, Bonnie Schaller, her parents, Shimon, Yabi. Shortly into the game, the Hillers made some noise. Alyssa Souza rips in a goal to make it a one to nothing Hillers lead. Megan White and Olivia Mingase, Hillers alum on the call. Another senior Halloween costume dress up yesterday. Yep, yeah, they did a few laps around the track outside. Oh, who was yeah, that, Alyssa? Five minutes. Who was Alyssa? Yeah, we I think to, so. We had to write that. Yeah, you got it. Shortly into the second quarter, freshman Camille Perlov finds junior Avery Hutchinson to make it a 2 to nothing game. The Hillers took the win over Ashland 3-1. In the finale of the triple header this past Tuesday, Hopkinton boys varsity soccer took on Ashland. In the second quarter, Owen Schnur finds Colin Davin off a free kick. Declan Mick on the ball. He's going to touch it to Andrew Gunn, who drives it forward. Schnoor's going to get on the end of this, controls it. He's got men on him. Nice layoff. Oh, this could be a great. Yeah, yeah, nice shot. Goal! That was an that was an error on the keeper. He was there. It's, he just it went through his hands. Ashland later on would have a goal of their own, and it would end in a one-to-one -one final. It was another great week of Hiller Sports versus their arch nemesis clockers. Field hockey and soccer will be back in action this coming weekend against Bellingham. The Hopkinton Hillers took on Bellingham this past weekend in field hockey and soccer. Four games took place this past Saturday. It was the final weekend for Hillers soccer. In Game 1, it was JV Girls Soccer and Emily Hayward netted the first goal of the game with under two minutes left in the first quarter. Dribble that ball away. She was just looking for a chance for it to hit the ground and she would take it from there. Erlich sends it up. There you go. Look at that. Finds Hayward. There it is. There is a goal. Emily Hayward makes it one to nothing. Yep, put that ball in front. Let somebody else take it. And what a great job outrunning her defender. Then about three minutes into the second quarter, Emma Champlin netted a goal near the corner of the box to make it two to nothing. Well, I mean, you know, if you needed a field for a game. There's know. a strong boot there, and that's in. Look at that, Emma Champlin bangs it in to make it two to nothing. Just over five minutes left in the second, Ariana Schaefer adds on another for the Hillers. So will it all be at the gazebo? Or? All at the gazebo, correct. White airs it out to the net, that's a loose ball, it's put in. There with the goal is Ariana Schaefer. A three nothing lead for the Hillers. And you could give Veronica White the assist there. So nice play just up there right in front and someone has to get to it first. Hopkinton took the game over Bellingham by a final of four to nothing. Next up was the girls' varsity game. Alexis Veal 
found Lexi Trendle with just over 10 minutes left in the first quarter. Here's title. Veal with the shot out in front and it's put in. It went off of Trendle, I believe. She got the last touch on it. In the second quarter, the Hillers would add more goals. Ava Perlov nets this goal with just below 11 and a half minutes left. Butler sends it up looking for Perlov. Found her. Perlov trying to work through. Nice move there. There goes Perlov. Airs it out to the net off the goalkeeper's hand and in. What a beauty by Ava Perlov. And it's 2-0 Hillers. Gabriella Siri finds Lexi Veal with 6.05 left. Siri will take it. Free kick, rather. Out in front, Veal, shot, goal! 3-0 Hillers. Brooke Burt Whistle adds yet another Hillers goal about 90 seconds later to make it 4-0. Nice move there, sends it over. Burt Whistle airs it out to the net, and that's in! Brooke Burt Whistle hit that one so hard she almost broke the back of the net. 4 nothing Hillers. Hillers took the game over Bellingham by a final of 5-0. After girls varsity soccer, it was time for JV field hockey, and it was Kylie Locke time. Third quarter, and just over six and a half minutes left, Kylie Locke makes it one to nothing. Billy Anderson trying to break free. Pass up. Closing in, shot, and that's in! And that was Kylie Locke with the goal. Less than a minute after her first goal, Kylie Locke scores her second goal of the game. Locke, shot is diverted. Secondary attempt. Turned away, still in the attack zone. Locke launches it into the net. How about another one for Kylie Locke? Two to nothing game with just over a couple minutes left to go, and guess what? Kylie Locke does it again. Look out, going for the hat trick. There's a shot and it's put in. There it is. Kylie Locke does it again. And I believe that was all Locke. Lily Anderson was there, but I think it was uh, just the initial shot by Locke that put it in. The Hillers JV team took the win over Bellingham, three to nothing. Final game of the Saturday action, Hillers Varsity battled Bellingham. In the third quarter, Vani Sharma found the net to make it one to nothing. Mara Souza sends it up over Sarah Doyle. Doyle trying to close in. Gets it out and turns it around out in front of the net and it's put in. Vani Sharma on the goal. Bellingham scored a goal of their own in the fourth quarter, and the game ended in a one-to-one -one draw. Hiller's boys soccer took on Bellingham this past Sunday. Varsity soccer got the action started off. First quarter, about five and a half minutes in, Bellingham got the scoring started. One to nothing, Bellingham into the third quarter. But with just over 12 and a half minutes left, the Hillers respond. It's intercepted. Gon steps up. He's going to move into the attack now. Vasington on the ball. Vasington's got it. Vasington's got a clear shot here on goal, and he's going to score it. What a nice goal by Vasington. Sam Vasington nets the game tying goal. Several minutes later, Owen Schnorr strikes. On the Paul Peter. He's beat his man. And he crosses it to uh, Schnorr, who oh, oh, oh. Control, takes a controlling touch and blasts it into the, uh, the far corner for a Hopkinton lead. 
A 2-1 Hillers lead in the fourth quarter, and with just below eight minutes left, Schnorr adds yet another on a penalty kick. Penalty kick this season. <laughs> Strongly uh, connected with that one and put it into the side netting. I thought that was going to come out of the back of the net. <laughs> Hillers take the game 3-1 over Bellingham in their season finale. Hiller's JV was next up, and they had themselves quite a good day. Noah Lee Thomas makes it one to nothing with 8.48 left in the first quarter. Tika up to Lee Thomas. Into the attack zone. Nice moves in front of the net. Shot, goal! one nothing Hiller's Noah Lee Thomas. Just over six minutes later, the Hiller's strike again. Back pass there over to Batika. Working up front, Bielabreski takes the shot, it's in! Andrew Brilo Brzezeski strikes and makes it a 2 0 Hillers lead. Hopkinton took the season finale by a final of 9 0, and that wrapped up a great season of Hillers soccer and another terrific weekend of Hopkinton Hillers Fall 1 Season Athletics. In the final week of the Fall 1 sports season, Hopkinton Hillers Varsity Field Hockey took on the Medway Mustangs. It was a good defensive battle. In the third quarter, Medway came through with a goal. It, it always makes a difference, sure. but even more so with 7-on-7. Seven seven. Mitico sends it up. And here comes Berger. Berger on a break to the net. Backhander in. What a goal there by Julie Berger, the senior for Medway. Wide open break and she takes advantage with 8.50 and counting left to go. Julie Berger took advantage of the open opportunity to net the only goal of the game and Medway took the victory one to nothing the Mustangs of Medway improved to 6-3-0 with the win. Hopkinton fell to 3-5-1 on the season and would lose the next day to Holliston to conclude a fantastic Fall 1 2020-2021 season. Congratulations on a great year to all the players and co-head coaches Becky Abate and Megan Carlisle. How do you think the season is going so far? Uh, I think the season is going very well. Uh, first of all, we feel very fortunate just to be able to play this year, given all that that's taking place. Uh, so uh, we've been playing very well. We've got uh, the five five wins, so we're, we're playing well, and hopefully we'll be able to get the rest of the year in. How long have you been coaching golf for, and can you tell us a little bit about your background with golf? Sure. Well, this is my first year at Hopkinton. Uh, I'm from Connecticut originally, and I, I played high school golf in Connecticut. And I also, when I was living in Connecticut, uh, did some coaching at my alma mater, my high school. Um, I played college golf. Um, I also played uh, for a long time after that competitively. Um, I ended up turning professional. I played some mini tour events. I played some New England-based tournaments. Was in the PGA for a short time, and as I was a club pro, played a lot of tournaments around New England. So. Um, I've been a pro at two different courses. I've owned a driving range, been in the golf business for a uh, very long time. All right, Manny. Hey, see how you're doing, all right? Um, are there hey, any different things right? with how the hey, golf matches are being done this year right? due to COVID-19? Right. Yeah, the, the, um, the way the matches are being played, the, the, the first thing that's um, taking place is we only have a total of 10 matches, so it's a bit of a shortened year. 
Um, also too, we are uh, playing in, in groups of four with our own kids. So we're not playing against two guys from the other team. Uh, so competitively, it's a little bit different atmosphere, but I, I can understand why they did it to keep everybody you know, from the same school together and keep them a little bit safer. And hopefully next year we'll be, uh, we'll be back to normal. Are there some parts of your game you've been working on improving this season? Uh, I've been working on my putting around the green a lot and, uh, and a lot of chipping too, just around the green stuff. Tell us about your background in golf and how long you've been playing for. Uh, I've been playing for three or four years, I think, and uh, just played with my dad for a little back then. He's playing now. How has it been working this year with Coach Vanoff? Uh, he's been doing good. Solid coach. Uh, he's given some pointers and kept it positive on the course. Nice. Um, and how has your season gone so far? Uh, it's gone pretty well. We've uh, we've won every match so far, so you know, pretty positive. What are some parts of your game you have been working on improving this season? Uh, this season, I've been working on chipping and putting because I think that's when I really score the best. Uh, I've been working on my aim and putting a lot because that can really alter my score. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to HCAM Sports Talk Live. Tom Nappy alongside Mike Tarosian and Bob Hamilton. We certainly hope that you enjoyed the highlights from what was a terrific Hopkinton Hillers fall sports season. All the games in the book, and uh, next up will be winter, and we'll certainly let you know what our uh, broadcast schedule will be when we know what the schedule will be. The winter season expected to start sometime in mid-December, so we'll certainly keep you informed. But right now, it's our favorite time of the show. It's time to do our NFL picks, and believe it or not, we're already heading to week 11. And uh, last week, pretty competitive, guys, very competitive. Uh, I was the grand champion going 10 and 4, so I'm very happy about that. Uh, Mike? But you're not gloating, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh, absolutely not. Yeah. Mike was uh, only a game behind going 9 and 5. Those darn bears. Yeah, the bears. And Bob and Jared tied at eight and six. Wow. So a uh, very competitive week. Very competitive week. I think we're starting to get uh, pretty good at these NFL picks. <laughs> Not really, but. No. That's Not right. even close. <laughs> I mean, and, and who would have thought that the Patriots would pull that off? Yeah, exactly. Uh, what a great win by the Patriots on Sunday night. I think the rain certainly helped them. Uh, the fact that Lamar Jackson couldn't run like he usually does <laughs> all, right? and uh, couldn't really pass either. Uh, that rain was unbelievable, especially uh, in the second half towards the end of the game. But the Patriots, they knew how to play in it. And um, I love their approach uh, with Rex Burkhead and Harris. Uh, it was really just uh, ground and pound the whole way for the Patriots. And it paid off. That You're was discounting. You're discounting the moral boost that they got from their big win over the Jets? Ah, uh, yes. Can't forget about the win over the 0-8 Jets by a field goal. Uh, it, it's amazing, though. They looked, um, they've looked pretty bad the last two, three weeks. This week, they looked really good. To beat a team like Baltimore, I'm impressed. And that puts them right back in the, in the picture. Four and five, you're right back in the picture. You still yep. got a battle ahead of you to win the division, but I think they're only two games out now because Buffalo lost, but yeah. tough schedule coming up for the Patriots, though. So they're going to have to uh, get some more big wins just like they did this past Sunday night. All right, but uh, our first pick, it is Thursday night football, the Arizona Cardinals and the Seattle Seahawks. Both teams are six and three. And uh, the Cardinals, I believe, beat the Seahawks the last time these two teams met up with a game-winning field goal. The Seahawks have lost two straight now. They're in a bit of a struggle. Uh, and this is finally a very good Thursday night football game, or at least it should be. I think this will be a very high-scoring game. Both of these teams, they kind of lack in the defensive area. 
Um, I'm going to go Arizona here because they're playing really well. They beat Buffalo last week in Seattle. They can't find their defense, and they're just struggling. Uh, Mike, who do you got? Well, you know, I was thinking the same thing, but uh, how about that uh, Murray's pass, the Hail Mary to win the game? You know, they're coming off a, the Cardinals are coming off a huge uh, high rate now. But you look at everything, like you said about Seattle's defense, I, I've got to go Seattle to cover. But I think I, – I'm going to be surprised. I think this is going to be one of these – like our Chicago game last week. I think it's going to be one of these who to thunk, you know, on the Patriots, who to thunk. Um, yeah. But I, I'm with you on the Seahawks. All right, Bob, who do you got? Yeah, I picked the Seahawks this week, but after listening to you about the Cardinals, I'm very cautiously optimistic. But I think Russell Wilson is going to do it again. This oh, week. I thought you were going to change your pick for a minute. No, I'm I'll like, stick well, with the Seahawks. The Cardinals better hit that or Bob will be mad at me. Yeah. <laughs> All right, on to the Sunday games. The 6-3 and three Tennessee Titans against the 6-3 and three Baltimore Ravens. The game's in Baltimore – I did not like the way Tennessee looked at all last week. I thought they were horrible against the Colts. I don't know if that'll be a continuing trend or if uh, maybe they're starting to fall apart a little. But in any case, uh, I'm going to go Baltimore here. I don't see Lamar Ooh. Jackson losing two in a row. Well, I, I like Tennessee on this here. You know, Tennessee crushed them the first time they met. And la the last time they met in January. And, and they, you know – Oh, the playoff game. The playoff game, right? So it was like 20, 28 12, 20, 11. Yeah, that, 12, was a, that was a big upset, too. Yeah, huge, huge. But, um, <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I, I, don't see, I don't see the Ravens offense doing anything. They've been struggling so much. So, yeah, I'm going to go Tennessee. Yeah, I'm just the opposite, right. Mike. I think that the Ravens offense is going to come back after their – humiliating loss to the Patriots. <laughs> I don't think they can suffer that. I mean, I know people in Baltimore, and they still haven't stopped crying yet. So the Ravens <laughs> better come through. This is the inside perspective. I like that. <laughs> this is how on the ball I am today. In Mike's column, instead of writing Tennessee, I wrote Mike. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, that'll give them the edge to have Mike on there. I don't stand a chance to win it this week at that rate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right, the four and five Lions and the three and seven Panthers. And how about them Lions? They're on a three-game winning streak. Uh, this game should be interesting. Uh, the Panthers did not do anything against the Bucks last week. Detroit beat Washington. Pretty good win by Detroit last week. Ah, man, I don't know who to pick in this one. I guess I'm going to go – I'm going to go Lions because Bridgewater is really questionable. Hmm. You know what? This is like one of those things, you know, if I go the other way, then you wind up winning for the week, you know, and I don't like that to happen too much. Uh, you know, but you're right. I mean, three, three games in a row. Well, I, Brid Bridgewater might not play this week. That's the only thing, too. Yeah. Heat up. I know, but it's only uh, well, it's only Wednesday. So okay, let's go ahead. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go Detroit. All right. I don't see that that was any big gamble there. The Lions are gonna beat the Panthers. I think that that the Panthers just don't have it together this year. Wow! First time in history, Lions across the board. Oh. <laughs> uh, the three. Uh, huh? What was that, Bob? I was going to say, we're either all losers or all winners. Probably all losers, but. Hey. Uh, hey, hey <laughs> the three, five, and one Philadelphia Eagles and the six and three Browns. The Eagles are awful. Okay. <laughs> they couldn't even beat the Giants. I'm going Browns. <laughs> but the Eagles, they always bite me, so they'll probably win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. I'm uh, definitely Eagles. Your Eagles or Browns? Oh, I'm sorry. The Browns. Did I say Eagles? Oh, my goodness. She has Browns. I'm, just, I'm, with you on, I'm with you on the Eagles. I should say that. I'll, yes. just, I'll just write Mike again. Oh, Mike. <laughs> I was already counting my victory over Mike because I knew the Eagles aren't going to make that. The Browns by 
I think the Browns are going to make it by 14 points over the Eagles at least. All right. It's it's a brown out. Yeah. (laughs) The four and five Patriots at the two and seven Houston Texans, a must win game for the Patriots, just like pretty much every game for the rest of the season is Houston's been awful. I know they have the home field here and they'll actually be fans, but give me new England. They uh, restored a little faith last week. Yeah, yeah, my, my, my faith grew back in uh, in uh, Patriots North, and and uh, yeah, Patriots will uh, I think come away with this one. All right, Bob, what do you got? Yeah, as much as I uh, hate to do it, I have to pick the Patriots over the Texans. Uh, I really think the Texans are going to have a good game, and if the Pats don't, which is always a possibility this year. It's just too hard to tell. But I'm picking the Pats over the Texans. I think this will be a pretty high-scoring game. Should be a fun matchup. Cam Newton up against Deshaun Watson. All right, we got the 7-2 and two Green Bay Packers and the 6-3 and three Indianapolis Colts. And I'll tell you what, the Colts, they came to play last Thursday night, and they upset us all as we all picked the Titans. Colts ended up getting the win. Uh, the Packers, they've been struggling a little. They did get a win barely this week against Jacksonville. Uh, but they had a tough time in that game. Uh, this is a tough one. You know what? Let's have Mike go first for this one. Packers. Oh, gee, thanks. <laughs> well, I, you know what? It's, it's not going to be pretty. Uh, you know, Colts have given up, what is it here, the second fewest passing yards this year. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go Baltimore. Uh, go Colts. I need that. That one's in Baltimore. All right, Baltimore, 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 Baltimore. And, I, and I did. <laughs> I'm just gonna write Mike again. I didn't pick the Eagles, right? As long as I pick them, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah, pick yeah. the Eagles. Okay. Well, yes, I'm picking no, the Packers since uh, we're going out of order here because uh, I don't want to. I want to give uh, Tom a chance to go with the right side or back to the dark side. But the uh, Packers are going to win over the Colts. You know, if Bob says Packers are going to win, I got to go with that. Because yeah. <laughs> uh, I did so well last week. So this week. Well, the Packers better play better than they did last week. They almost lost to the For Jaguars. Sure. That was unbelievable. Hope no one bet the spread on that one. Uh, the 9 0 Steelers and the 1 8 Jags. Should I just write Pittsburgh in for everybody? Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll fit in our segment better if you do, yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Pittsburgh it is. 9-0, and oh, chance to go 10-0. and oh. Wow. wow. Never would have thought we'd see the Steelers or the chance to go 10-0. and oh. They're the real deal this year, but I guess what the critics would say is they haven't really been tested, and they won't get tested much this week no, either. Uh, the 3-6 and six Atlanta Falcons and the 7-2 and two New Orleans Saints. New Orleans, uh, well, here's the problem about this game. Drew Brees is going to be out. Yep. He got hurt last week, a few broken ribs. That will make things interesting. Uh, Atlanta, what did they do last week? They had the bye week last week. And the week before that, they had a nice win against Denver. So, what to do here? I'm going to go Saints still. I think uh, they got James. I think Jameis Winston might start. Um, but I think they'll be all right. I'm going to go Saints. This is going to be a tough game, though. Uh, without Breeze, it certainly makes things harder. Uh, let's see. Bob, who do you got? Uh, what do they say down there? Who dat? Who dat? Who dat? Who day? I'm going with the Saints. All right. The who well, that nation. Oh, well, just to be different, I'm going to go Falcons. I think, uh, you, you know me, I like my teams that come off the bye week and uh, and no and, and being Saints being breezeless. Breezeless. <laughs> breezeless. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I mean, I could definitely see, uh, it, you know, if Jameis Winston goes out there and throws six interceptions, it could be some yeah. problems. Yeah, you think? Which he's been <laughs> known to do. Then again, Matt Ryan's been known to do that too. All right, the the matchup of the week, the two six and one Cincinnati Bengals at the two and seven Washington football team. <laughs> that is a tough one. Uh, 
Who do you pick in this? Um, I'm going to go Bengals. I think their quarterback's a little bit better. <laughs> Mike. Bengals. Bengals. Same reason. All right, Bob. Yeah, I, I picked the Bengals myself, but, but this one is like, uh, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, watch, it'll probably be the most entertaining game of the yeah, week. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> 42 to 43. <laughs> Washington. <laughs> uh, right. The two and seven Dallas Cowboys and the four and five Minnesota Vikings. Minnesota has been playing good lately. Great win last night against the Chicago Bears. I'm going to go Minnesota. Yep, I'm Viking action myself. All right, Bob, are you going to be a Viking again? Yes, I'm going to Vikings. They they've got it all over the Cowboys. Bob the Viking chooses Vikings. Yeah. I'm just wondering how Bob's able to uh, make all these picks without having to pick the Bears this week. <laughs> Wait, let me check my sheet. Uh, no, I didn't pick the Bears this week. Oh, you can't. They're on a bye. <laughs> well, they're not going to lose. Yeah, you get that right. The 8-1 and one, Kansas City Chiefs and the 6-3 and three Raiders. Oh, this is a Sunday night football game. This is Sunday night. Uh, they have them out of order on the site today. But anyways, I am – the Raiders actually uh, played very good last week. Uh, they beat the Seahawks last week. Yep. Oh, no, that was the Rams. I'm sorry. Raiders uh, – I forget what they did last week. Oh, here it is. They, they won – and we all picked them, so they must have played somebody bad. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, I think this game will be close, though. Uh, Mike, who do you got? Yeah, Chiefs, but I don't think it's gonna be close. I think it's gonna be a little bit more than a touchdown. Yeah, division games are always close. Yeah, we'll we'll put we'll put that as a side bet. If it's yeah, well, yeah, I'm gonna make go. it unanimous. I'm going with the Chiefs. All right. There it is. All right, the six and three Miami Dolphins and the three and six Denver Broncos. Yeah. Look out, Miami's coming. They're coming for the East. It's they're looking like it, aren't they? They are. They're playing well. Uh, their defense is playing well. Their running game's starting to get going, and I think they're gonna take down the Broncos next week. Yeah, I'm Mike. with you. I'm with you. Dolphins. Well, Bob, who do you got? Yeah, I, I'm taking the Dolphins, but th this is an unusual position for them. They're usually just the spoiler in the division, but they're running up there. They're yep. pushing. And we have a big opportunity for the Jets to maybe get their first win of the season this week. Garrett's not here. The 0 and 9 Jets at the 2 and 7 Chargers. And we're going to give Bob the honor of picking this one first. <laughs> yeah, well, you're obviously – you've got to pick the Chargers because the Jets don't want to ruin their chances in the draft. <laughs> That's a good point. Mike, who do you got? You know, I almost agree with Bob on that one, but I was still good. I was still going with uh, San Diego. <laughs> That's what I did. LA, yeah. I was still – Well, no, you I'm did saying, agree I'm with still, them. No, no, I, I agreed with him on that, but I, I was agreed with him on the other point about Jets not blowing their draft pick. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll just write Mike in there again. Yeah. Oh, uh, I think it'll be the Chargers uh, winning, but if the Jets are going to win one game, I feel like this could be it. So no. I'll use maybe I should use my tie card on this one. Could be a tie. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put a star. There we go. It's a provisional uh, pick. Is that like a mulligan? You get that? But that that's right. That means, like, if the Chargers win, I win. Yeah. Uh, or if it's a tie, I win. Yeah. But if the Jets win, I lose. All right, Monday Night Football. The 6-3 and three Los Angeles Rams of Anaheim against the 7-3 and three Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That Anaheim thing was a joke. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but I am – I got to go Bucks. They came back in a big way last week against the Panthers. Uh, Rams, are, this is going to be a great game. Monday Night Football actually has a great game. Um, but I'll go Bucks. I think Brady and crew will get the job done. Antonio Brown's starting to come alive. He had several receptions last week. 
Uh, Mike, who do you got? Well, I think, you know, <laughs> I'm going to go with the Rams. I think, I think you're going to see a sack fest here. I think you're going to see the Rams, who is probably like the best team in the NFL for sacking a quarterback. All right. Bob? I'm going with the Bucks. I got to give Brady a break. <laughs> He's coming on pretty good, so I think it. Uh, they're going to have a good game against the Rams. As long as they don't do what they did two weeks ago against the Saints, <laughs> only put up three points. That was what they call an anomaly. Yes, I think that was the last time you'll see something like that. Uh, but it's nice to actually have a really good Monday Night Football game. This is going to be a good one. Yes, although good. last night wasn't bad. Minnesota and Chicago, that was a good game. Uh, but Tom Brady and the Bucks and the Rams. It's going to be a good one. Uh, I don't know what to expect out of the Bucks. Sometimes they look very good, like last week, and then other times they have all kinds of problems. Jumping off sides, the offensive line looks terrible. No one can catch. But I think overall they'll certainly be a playoff team. They probably won't win that division unless the Saints uh, go ice cold without Breeze, but it should be a good game on a Monday night. All right, well, that's our uh, NFL picks. Best of luck to you guys, and we shall see what happens in week 11 of the NFL season. And next week, right here on HKM Sports Talk Live, we'll have footage from the uh, college signings, a few hillers uh, committing to play athletics in college. We'll have some footage from that. And, of course, we'll have our Week 12 NFL picks, and we'll shame whoever lost our Week 11 picks as well, and a lot more. But for Bob Hamilton, Mike Tarosian, I'm Tom Nappy, and we thank you for tuning in to HCAM Sports Talk Live. Don't forget, you can catch a brand-new episode every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again soon. Goodbye, everybody.